it's my absolute pleasure to, in, to introduce to you someone who I have been so impressed and already learned so much from in my own life. It's someone who has been a leader and a visionary in our community within the system of education here in Miami. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Derek Negron. Good afternoon. Glad to be here. Thanks for being here with us. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So let's start uh, by going all the way back. I'm curious from you where all this knowledge came from. You've <laughs> been someone, like I said, who's, who's uh, visionary, who's creative, who's willing to think outside the box, even in part of a, a large structure, which can be hard to, hard to move or hard to be creative within. Right. And your vision I watched personally. I saw it transform Carroll City Middle School. So before we get there, tell me a little bit about like your background. How did you come to work in the field of education here in Miami? All right. Again, glad to be here. Uh, very interesting story. I'll make it short. Uh, I was actually having this conversation about an hour ago. It's very interesting how doors open in life and they close. And sometimes you don't really understand why things happen. But nevertheless, you see the outcome and are grateful for the opportunities and the pathways, the hills and the valleys. And I was that person. My mom was an educator for over 30 years. And not that I had anything against teaching, obviously, but I just did not want to go that pathway. And I remember graduating from college and uh, starting a master's program. She said, I think you should teach while you go to school at night. I said, uh, I'll try it out and see. And I did that while I went to school at night. And here I am some 17 years later, still in education. And what's kept me in the field of education is the opportunity to impact the lives of children and also communities, right? It's not just one child, but it's also ultimately the impact that we're making it within a community. What'd you start teaching? Where? No, what? What, what, what was the oh, first thing you my, taught? <laughs> my very first day in elementary school, I was uh, the temporary teacher for a kindergarten class, believe it or not. Five-year-olds tugging at my, oh my, God. My, my pants and not having their shoelaces tied and runny well, noses. <laughs> uh, that's how I started out. And I taught eventually third grade and then fifth grade and became a, an instructional coach and assistant principal and, and the principal. Uh, now and in my current role still within Dade County as administrative director. So tell me a little bit, let's just go back a little bit before your current role. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about how you became the principal of Carroll City Middle School, where Carroll City Middle was when you arrived, and tell me a little bit about the initiatives that you started there and where Carroll City was uh, when you left off. Sure. I became the assistant principal first at Carroll City Elementary. And for those of you who may know a little bit about the area, Carroll City Middle at the time was a six-time F school, six consecutive Fs, uh, one of the lowest performing schools in the state. Wow. And I remember receiving the phone call to join the administrative team there to obviously turn around the school. We had 10 months to do it, or you know there could have been a possibility of the state taking over. Uh, so as the assistant principal, it was a very fast-paced learning environment. And a couple years after that, the opportunity to become principal came available, and I was appointed to that position. And being a part, and it's interesting, Carroll City Middle is directly next door to the school that I taught to at, rather, for 10 years. So I was in the same community for a while, knew a lot about the parents, the students, uh, community stakeholders. So the community still to this very moment is very, very dear to my heart. And having the opportunity to serve there as principal was a, a, an extreme honor. And one of the things that I wanted to do within the very first month of being appointed there is to start academic academies that gave students an opportunity that they would normally not get. And we started that. And one of the legs of our academies was in visual and performing arts. And at that time, Carroll City did not have an actual music program for over, well, since 2010. So we're talking almost a decade, about eight years or so, where there's no actual music program. So I definitely, me being a former music student in middle school myself. Was it trombone? Trombone, you got yeah, it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. First chair, as a matter of fact. First I wasn't too chair. bad. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, it was, and that was my first time in sixth grade picking up a trombone. And uh -huh. I learned it and practiced and competed. And uh, within the first six to eight months or so, I you know moved up and it just became something that I took a lot of ownership. So I see myself and saw myself as the student that got an opportunity 
to really use arts as a vehicle, right, to connect to school and to further my education. And I knew that in my particular community, it would be a huge win for students to have the same opportunity that I had. So tell me a little bit about why you think music or the Visual Performing Arts Academy was so important to you when you took a look at what Carroll City was able to offer and what you, what the type of experience you wanted those students to have going forward. Why was it a priority for you to uh, create this Visual Performing Arts Academy which included restarting the music department at Carroll City? It's very important for every student as well as every staff member to feel connected to the school. And not every student connects with math and reading initially. One of the ways to engage students and to increase their sense of belonging is to connect them to programs and people. And I knew that and I kept that again at the forefront of my mind. How do I connect every student to a program or a person that when they wake up in the morning, hey, they might not be so excited about the math class, but they'll be excited about Mr. Johnson who's teaching the music class, or Sammy, who might be a student in the music class that they've connected with. And as a part of just teaching the whole child, that's a huge part of the child's success. And that includes the after school programs and before school. The kid needs to be connected and engaged just like any other child or staff member that I had in the building. So me understanding that, again, the six academies was designed so that I wanted to reach every single child that I could in a unique way in which they would find interest and find a sense of belonging in the school. To make a long story short, we were able to partner with each other at Carroll right. City Middle School through this Music Access Fellowship. It was actually part of the, the prompt, right? Was that right. two different organizations had to come together and find a solution to one of these tough musical problems. Right. Tell me a little bit about uh, the work uh, that we were able to do together uh, at Carroll City Middle, but from your perspective, what did you see in the students? How did you see that process affect your student body? All right. So I remember, again, very vividly having a conversation with one of the district employees, and, and literally YMU was a godsend. It fell in my lap, literally. And I met with Sammy, um, CEO, a couple weeks after the, my initial meeting with the district staff, and he, I would say within the first five minutes, I knew that it was going to be a partnership. We shared the same vision around providing quality music programming and access of music programming for every student, not just a student or a group of students, but providing the access to all kids. And the second thing uh, was Sammy's vision about how to connect the community. And again, that's an extremely important part of this work for me. It's one of the things that I, uh, that I value a lot. And those two things stood out for me. And when I was able to find, we were able to find clarity around what that would look like uh, in the school, it was a game changer. So the, to fast forward, right, we saw within the first 18 months of the program, the significant impact that it made in the lives of children. So I had kids that when we look at their academic ratings and their, their assessment scores, 84% of those students had improvements in mathematics close to 90% in their, their language arts performance. We saw significant decreases in behavioral infractions and huge increases in attendance. So when we talk about, as a principal, those metrics, those things that you're not only held accountable for, but you measure the effectiveness of what you're doing in a school by the impact it makes in academics and attendance and behavior. Those are the areas that we knew we needed to track. So when we looked at that, we were able to say that when we had kids connected again, to a quality program and quality people, then we know we can make a, lot of, a, a very big difference in their lives. So I wanna highlight one thing you said as we wrap up today. I think this is the one thing I'd really like people to take away, and you can uh, speak a little bit about your current role as well. You mentioned bringing the community together. I know this is something that's been near and dear to your heart long before we became partners, and this is something that's been dear to our heart as well. But through this partnership together, we were able to figure out a method of going into a neighborhood and connecting the high schools with the middle schools and the elementary schools, making sure that the same consistent music program was Correct. provided for, in this case, all 12 schools in the Miami Gardens area. So just tell me from your perspective, uh, what is it about the, um, the power of community 
the power of community engagement, community buy-in, um, and, and how has that changed recently in the Miami Gardens area, and how does your role contribute to that going forward? Yeah, I, again, I believe that we change communities through students. I 100% believe that. As a matter of fact, the future, which is where we are now, tomorrow, right? This, you know, the next second is the future. The future exists through the lives of children. Mm -hmm. And having 12 schools to participate in quality music program and access again creates pathways. So the students that might not have been engaged or the students that might not have normally stayed or graduated from high school, they now have something to connect that's going to be quality from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And that was, again, a part of the vision. How do we change the trajectory of children? And we do that, again, by the things that I mentioned. And for, and for sure, uh, YMU has been a part of a huge part of this puzzle where we are connecting kids to their future. And to see the, the improvement, in, again, in not just their academic performance, but to see kids and how their, <clears throat> excuse me, their sense of, of just pride and, and self-worth and self-value blossom on stage, giving them opportunities to perform. Like I was, again, that child that being able to perform and the preparation and the confidence that it gives you, you can't replace that as priceless. So all of those things put together is what YMU has brought not only to Carroll City Middle, but also the other 11 schools that are in the, in the feeder program. Well, Derek, or as I've known you for the past two and a half years, <laughs> Principal Negron, <laughs> I appreciate you being here with us today. It's been an honoring and uh, a humbling experience watching you, learning from you, and getting to be your partner in uh, this educational initiative. It's been a wild ride. I'm looking forward to what we can continue to do through our combined efforts, and I really appreciate you being here today to spread the news about what we're doing, about oh, the power absolutely. of music education, and to raise some funds for Young Musicians Unite. Right, and if I can, very quickly, if you have not had the opportunity uh, to give, this was a short story, uh, a part of the, again, the bigger goal and vision, uh, but I encourage you to partner with YMU. I'm a testament and also a, a beneficiary of the quality uh, programming the the depth of service and and really just being humbled to be partners with this organization to do this great work. So I encourage you to please get involved um, and help this organization help us to meet our goal to be able to provide quality music program for every child.